Hello everyone, I'm Lorenzo Maselli. And I'm Maria Giavazzi. I will be talking to you about our paper, a physical property of strident fricatives at the edges, implications for cancer and discrimination. In particular, I will be talking to you about our background, our introduction, our materials and methods, and their analysis, and I'll be then leaving the floor to Maria. We'll talk to you about our results and our conclusions. Speech perception plays an important role in shaping phonological regularities. Languages prefer contrastive sound pairs which are as perceptually distinct as possible. Just to give you an example, there is a cross-linguistic preference for vowel inventories to display vowels that are as evenly dispersed throughout the whole vowel space as possible. What we did was offer a case study within this tradition, focusing on the acoustic underpinnings of voice and contrast in alveolar strident fricatives. Here you can see a table with a small sample of languages that display the, the, this, contra the, this contrast in as uh, typologically representative of a way as possible. In particular, you can see that the most licensing context is the intervocalic one. But what is interesting to note here is the asymmetry between word initial and word final position. As you can see, word in, the, the word initial position tends to be more licensing than the word final one. This asymmetry is similar to the one that is observed in stops, where it can be attributed to the availability of VOTQs to voicing. But our question was, what about fricatives where VOT no longer play, plays a role? How does this phenomenon manifest itself in fricatives? Our hypothesis is that the asymmetry in the realization of the contrast of the word edges is due to the different availability of durational cues to the contrast in word initial and word final position. So we now have to ask ourselves, how do listeners detect these durational cues? How do listeners assess the duration of a segment? Temporal markers have been shown to affect listeners' sensitivity to duration modifications of the segmental boundaries. In particular, large loudness jumps favor perceptibility over smaller loudness jumps. Sharp rising slopes favor perceptibility over shallower rising slopes, and left edge markers favor perceptibility over right edge markers. On the contrary, the blurriness of the segmental boundaries reduces the perceptibility of consonantal duration. Building on this work, we analyzed these temporal markers at the word edges as they may affect the perceptibility of phonological contrasts which rely on boundary detection, contrasts like the one under observation here. What you can see here in this image is the two possible contours that can be extracted from the sound file. The one on the bottom is a purely physical acoustic one, it's amplitude, uh, waveform, the one on top is a psychoacoustic one, loudness, that is the perceptual correlate of intensity. We worked with six speakers in American English, one of them was excluded from analysis. We had 12 English words and 12 nonce words compatible with English phonotactics in all possible contexts at the, word, at the left word edge, at the right word edge, and intervocalic. We work with S's and Z's. Uh, each of the speakers had to read the two lists four times. Each of the two lists was randomized in four different ways. And every item was presented in isolation. The recordings took place in a double-walled soundproof booth at the deck in Paris on a Toscom DR100 MK3 linear PCM recorder at a sampling rate 44.1 kilohertz. And our data were then exported into PRAT for annotation and analysis and MATLAB for filtering. 
sand samples were squared and low pass filtered using a second order Butterworth filter with a 10 hertz cutoff. Three characteristics of the contour shape were extracted. The peak value in decibel and the intensity slope in decibels and seconds from the sound answer to the peak for the word initial position and from the peak to the sound offset for the word final position. Sound stimuli were passed through a bank of gamma tone cochlear filters mimicking the frequency resolution of the human ear. Intensity contour was extracted and characterized at the upper four high frequency gamma tones. What you can see here is the output of our analysis. So uh, on top, you can see the, the, the overall intensity contour, while at the bottom, you can see the intensity contour for the four gamma tones plotted against a spectrogram where yellower zones correspond to higher energy concentrations, whereas greener zones correspond to lower energy concentrations. So the lighter areas of a traditional spectrogram. This is a S in word initial position. This is a Z in word initial position. And this is the, so an S and a Z in word final position. I'll be leaving the floor now to Maria. Dynamics effect models in our studio. Um, and we first uh, conducted an analysis, uh, which was basically just a sanity check to make sure that the stimuli we recorded were representative of American English uh, strident fricatives. So uh, the first analysis um, um, had duration as a dependent variable and position and segment type as fixed effects. And we, we found an effect of segment type, uh, not surprisingly, so S's were longer than Z's, and fricatives in final position were longer than initial fricatives. Uh, I'm not reporting here the data for voicing, but you can ask me about the voicing data in the question period. Um, so then our first model, um, the, the, the first model that we, that we did uh, was uh, looking at uh, peak intensity, which was the dependent variable. We see here uh, the peak intensity over the whole spectrum. We have segment types, again, as before on the X axis, S on the left and Z on the right. And we have peak of the, of the, um, of the contour in decibels on the Y, y, uh, y axis. Uh, there was no effect of segment type, there was no difference in peak between S's and Z's, but um, fricatives in initial position had a higher peak than fricatives in final position. What you see here are now the results for the models which um, focused on the four gamma tones at the, in the high frequency region. So again, we're looking at the dependent variable here is peak intensity. And on the, again, on the S, uh, on the right are S's, uh, and on the right, the results for Z's. And on the X axis, you see from left to right, uh, the four gamma tones for both fricatives and peak in decibels on the Y axis. Again, we found an effect of segment type. Uh, so S's had a higher peak uh, than Z's. There was no effect of position here. Uh, initial fricatives had a, the same peak as final fricatives. And there was a main effect of gamma tone, whereby high gamma tones had a higher peak than lower gamma tones. Now we move to the intensity slope models. Now, for, first, I'm going to show you the ones for the overall spectrum. Um, the setup of the, of the box plots is the same, um, but slope is now on the in dBs per second is on the y-axis. So the first model um, found a segment, an effect of segment type, whereby slopes were steeper for S than they were for Z. No effect of position, no difference in slope between the, the absolute value of the slope in initial with respect to the final position. 
and there was a position by segment interaction. And uh, the interaction is due to the fact that almost all voiced final fricatives uh, were at least to some extent partially devoiced. And so what you see here is that they basically behave like um, word final S's. And the difference comes only uh, between voiced and voiceless fricatives is only found in the word initial position. Now, what we see here is the results of the intensity slope models rest when restricting to the four gamma tones. And so here we found an effect of segment type, Z's having steeper slopes than S's, an effect of position with steeper slope in initial position than in final position, and an effect of gamma tones uh, with steeper slope in higher gamma tones and lower gamma tones. And crucially, the interaction that we found for the slope, uh, slopes over the entire spectrum goes away when we restrict our analysis to the high frequency region because the devoicing doesn't affect this part of the spectrum. So sort of summing up our results, uh, the, first, uh, the very first set of analysis confirms um, that the recorded fricatives are representative of, of alveolar strident fricatives in American English in terms of durational properties and in terms of um, voicing and partial devoicing that you can ask me about this in the question period. Uh, so what we found in the intensity peak and intensity slope models that I presented is that both these temporal markers are affected by the position of the fricative, whether it's in the initial or in the final position. In word initial position, strident fricatives at the left edge are characterized by those temporal markers that are known to increase listener sensitivity to duration modification. We found a greater global intensity peak over the entire spectrum in initial position, more salient spectral cues, which we estimated by the sharper intensity slopes on the gamma tones um, intensity contour. And the spectral cues were not or very little affected um, in the high frequency region by, by devoicing uh, in voice fricatives. Uh, the word initial position is thus the word edge in which the te temporal markers are sharper with respect to uh, the final position of the word, the right position. And it is conceivable that this positional privilege conditions the availability of the phonological contrast in final position, a contrast which is crucially dependent on the presence of durational cues to voicing in the alveolar strident fricatives. So our results thus constitute a first step um, towards a phonetically grounded account of the cross-linguistic asymmetry that we observed at the very beginning uh, in the distribution of vo voicing contrast at the two word edges, namely the fact that the contrast is much more often preserved in initial position than in final position in a very similar way to what we observe in stops. Thank you very much for listening to us. We look forward to your questions and comments on our talk and paper. Thanks for watching us and yeah, we do.